Welcome back to Sissy Spaces. And if you're new, welcome. Today's video is a Sunday reset because I want to get the house reset and cleaned for the week. This week is going to be a busy one, so the more I do today, the less I'll need to worry about. The rooms I'm focusing on are the kitchen, family room, upstairs on a suite bedroom, bathroom, and walk in closet. I also have a load of colors and a load of darks to wash today. I routinely wash one load per day, but I'm behind due to the busy schedule we had last week. I'm also doing some cooking and a little bit of organizing. So I hope you enjoy this one. And if so, at the end of the video, please remember to hit that like subscribe button. And if you've already subscribed, you know that hitting that like button, as well as watching the entire video, really supports my channel. As you can see, we're starting in the kitchen by unloading the dishwasher. The family and I routinely load the dishwasher every night, and we only start it if it's full. I found by doing this, I can start the day with a clean kitchen, eliminating the need to clean before cooking. Also, in my opinion, a clean kitchen is the first step to having a completely clean home. You may have noticed as I unload the dishwasher, I organize as I go. Having an organized kitchen is important because it saves time. In other words, it's easier to meal prep and cook because you know where everything is. Also, an organized kitchen is easier to clean and maintain because cluttered countertops and a refrigerator overflowing with food and containers are really difficult to clean. And finally, safety is the number one reason why I keep my kitchen organized. You or your family members are more likely to suffer from falls, slips, cuts, and burns if your kitchen is not organized. Last night before bedtime, I had my youngest son remove as much of Max's dog hair as possible from the couch. So today I could focus on tidying up the rest of this room. I also need to clean Max's toy crate the ottoman, and slow vacuum the floors. I would usually vacuum the couch and ottoman, but for the sake of time, we're going to use the microfiber cloth to knock any remaining dog hair off the ottoman. I purchased this dog toy box or crate from the at-home store over three years ago, and it's lasted a lot longer than the woven basket I had here before. Also, it's easy to clean and maintain. For instance, I'm using a vacuum to remove any dog hair and debris and non-bleach Clorox wipes to disinfect it. I also want to do a quick clean of his toys. I will usually throw them in the washing machine for a quick tap water wash and then dry them by hand. But today, we'll use a Clorox wipe to clean them instead. Yeah, he sets my body in motion. He just, he knows how to turn things up. Up next, we're going to slow vacuum the rug. I've mentioned this before, but it's worth repeating. Vacuuming your rug slowly will allow your machine to suck up more dirt and dust and ultimately get your rugs and carpets much cleaner. Also, slow vacuuming allows the brush to agitate the carpet properly and suck up the unclean bits that emerge. It takes patience and time, but by doing so, you save time later by not having to shampoo the carpet or rug as often. Why do I need to be good all the time? I'm wrapped around his finger, but he is mine. I slow vacuum this rug once per week, and in between that time, we use the iRobot. And as I said before, by vacuuming daily, I only need to shampoo this rug maybe once or twice per year. Don't get me wrong, I do spot clean the rug as needed, but not very often. Because by daily vacuuming, the soil, dirt, and other debris are removed before they have time to settle. But I don't want to think about no other than us. I've made it a habit to always clean the canister after each use. 
I read somewhere that the germs removed from the floor should be thrown out right away. Otherwise, they can settle in your vacuum and become a health hazard. I'm not sure how true that is, but I mainly empty my vacuum canister regularly to ensure that it continues to work properly and don't get clogged up. Time. I'm wrapped around his finger, but he is mine. After drying my hands, I'm going to cook breakfast. I had planned to cook mini quiche, but didn't have the pastry shells needed. I also thought of French toast, but was out of the brioche bread I prefer using. So to save time, we're using what we already have, which is cheese, eggs, almond milk, chicken bouillon cubes, and old-fashioned grits. And if you've been with my channel for a while, you already know what I'm cooking for breakfast. No drama, no drama, yeah, he's got a bad history. But what about it? Yeah, he's got a bad history. But I want him anyway. For those that are new to my channel, I add eight chicken flavored bouillon cubes to boil in water. And then once dissolved, add the Quaker Old Fashioned Grits. By doing this, you don't need to add salt or any other seasonings to your Old Fashioned Grits. I also like adding almond milk, cheese, ground and cracked black pepper, as well as salt to our scrambled eggs, and then cook them quickly on medium heat while stirring. Along with chicken flavored grits and cheesy scrambled eggs, I also warmed up some bacon that I cooked last week for the boys and hubby. I like cooking three of the large packages of bacon at once to use in other recipes and to also have available as needed. And it's a good thing I did because the day after I cooked that bacon, our oven went out. This usually occurs when the power goes out as it did last week. And it seems we may be without an oven for another week as the repairman is scheduled to assess the damages next week. Life goes up and it goes down. I know my mom taught me that I figured why we fool around so little. Breakfast is done and I'm going to grab something to eat before the rest of the family so I can head upstairs to deep clean the owner's suite bedroom, bathroom, and walk-in closet. I will be returning to the kitchen later to continue cleaning because it's time to deep clean the carriage and I also need to clean the cooktop, sink, and countertops. But I don't need another view. Time is not on my mind, but then it's you. The family is aware breakfast is ready and will begin shortly to grab something to eat. And as always, once they're done, I load the leftovers in the fridge and grab a cup of coffee and a quick break before I continue to clean. But today, because I have two loads of laundry to complete, I want to place my first load in the washer first, then take that quick coffee break. Leftovers are in the fridge, which means we can get our first load started. Although not shown here, I did place the game powdered detergent and white distilled vinegar in the soap dispenser tray and game firework beads and borax in the washer drum. I'm also washing these load of colors on the cotton cycle, which is intended for normally soiled cotton garments. By the way, the cotton cycle on the LG front load washer uses different drum motions to provide the best possible clean for cotton fabrics. Don't need another view. Time is not on my mind, but then it's you. Oh, I love it when the love comes around. And While drinking this cup of coffee, I was updating the calendar for the week, and on each day, we have several appointments to attend. After discussing it with the family, we will divide and conquer to get it done. Also, before heading upstairs, I need to refill Max's treat toy so he can have something to play with while I'm cleaning. Hubby and the boys are headed out, so for the next few hours, it will be Max and I, which means I will need to check on him periodically to ensure he's entertained and doesn't have any accidents. But I'm not gonna wake up, wake up. Don't wake up, wake up. Keep it steady, cause I'm happy, I'm not, I'm not gonna wake up. After adopting Max, we must have spent hundreds of dollars on toys, but this one was worth every penny. It's called a Kong Wobbler Treat Dispenser, and by adding treats or hard dog food, it will entertain your dog for hours. Max will use his paws to push his toy around until he empties it. So I need to fill it up, which will give me an hour to clean before checking on him. I know what you've been down thinking about him again. I know that your heart's been broken. 
For those that are new to my channel, the upstairs ensuite is used by my oldest son, while hubby and I use the downstairs ensuite. So today, along with the kitchen and family room, I'm also cleaning my oldest son's bedroom, bathroom, and walk-in closet. I like deep cleaning each room within my home monthly to ensure every surface is cleaned thoroughly, and hopefully I'll accomplish this today. My son does a great job of maintaining his room, but again, once a month, I like to deep clean it myself. I do plan to eventually add a rug and bench to this room, but it's currently not a priority, as I haven't even finished decorating the downstairs on the suite. As a matter of fact, last night I spent hours looking for a bed frame for me and hubby's room, as well as new chairs on the bench for the foot of the bed. By the way, it's not in April's budget, but I'm gonna gather ideas and hopefully can make it happen this summer. Everyone's got their hearts broken sometimes. Whenever I deep clean, I start by dusting all the surfaces first before using any cleaning products. I also plan to dust mop this room as well. In my opinion, it's always best to dust before cleaning, but if you have a lot of items out, it would be best to tidy first, then dust, and eventually use a cleaning product or just plain water to clean. But as you know, your choice of cleaning products always depends on the type of surface you plan to clean. As I mentioned earlier, last week we lost power for a few hours and we had a few storms as well. Whenever it storms and we lose power, hubby and I like to walk around and check for any mechanical failures and leaks. And of course, we found another leak in our dining room window and a miswire of the oven's power board. We've scheduled an appointment to have our oven fixed and add flashing around the dining room window to prevent further leaks. Oh. home is over 20 years old so repairs are non-stop but some repairs are not done properly the first time. For example, we've already replaced a window in the dining room before but apparently the installers did a poor job so the leaks are constant. This time when the window is repaired I will be taking plenty of photos and asking lots of questions. We've also decided to re-insulate our attic Yes, I said re-insulate because we've already had it done once after purchasing this home. But apparently the installers used the lowest grade of insulation because it now looks like sand. So again, another contractor, but I will be asking for a 10 to 20 year warranty before the work is done. <laughs> If I sound frustrated, I am. The money we're using to insulate the attic floor and ceiling was saved to remodel the downstairs bathroom. So the bathroom remodel is out for now. Also, it's getting harder and harder to trust these contractors. I can only blame myself though, because I'm always trusting those who I hire to perform work in my home. But from now on, they will be watched carefully. Max did very well downstairs by himself and he didn't have any accidents, but I decided I would remain downstairs a little while until he's down for a second nap. I also figured I could use this time to continue to clean the kitchen. Before leaving, the boys cleared the dishes from the sink and loaded them in the dishwasher. And it also looks as if one of them wiped down the cooktop, but I decided to do it again to remove the additional food stains they missed. I don't want to talk before the mama's lonely zips away. This is the Gen Air 6 burner cooktop and it's recommended to use soap and water to clean it only. But I've had this cooktop for over 7 years now and on occasion used the Dawn Power Wash and non-bleach Clorox wipes to keep it clean. I also used the Wyman stainless steel cleaner on the stainless steel areas but on occasion like today we'll use a non-bleach Clorox wipe to clean the stainless steel areas as well as the burners and cast iron grates. I also wanted to clean these countertops which hide stains very well. That's one of the reasons why I chose them, but when it's time to clean them, it's hard to tell which areas you missed. 
which isn't a good thing when trying to clean and disinfect them. I also use the Wyman's Granite and Stone Cleaner on these countertops regularly, but today, for the sake of time, I opted for the Clorox wipes instead. Fire burning like I do under my tattoos. It's a remedy, remedy, remedy. And the way you go, baby, don't you know? There's a remedy, remedy, remedy. Before heading back upstairs to clean, I want to dry the frying pan I used to cook this morning's eggs. I'm really checking to see if the boys cleaned it thoroughly. Sometimes they leave burnt on food on these pans, but today I was happy to see they cleaned it very well, which leaves me to dry it along with a drying rack and put them away. I also noticed that I need to refill the soap and dish detergent containers, but decided to do that later. I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna do that, darling, but loser, ain't gonna lose ya. Bedroom set used to belong to hubby and I, but in 2021, we chose to bring it upstairs to this room. And the furniture that was in here was moved to my youngest son's room. This all started because my youngest son had outgrown his full bed, so we gave him our oldest son's queen bed. That was one of the busiest days we've had in a very long time, shuffling furniture between three bedrooms. Because on that same day, hubby and I received our new bedroom furniture as well. Dr. Nice. I remembered the last time I wiped down this nightstand, I mistakenly left some pledge furniture polish in between the layers of the design, which was a pain to remove. So instead of spraying the cleaner directly on the drawer fronts, I'll use what's already on the microfiber cloth and take a little more time than usual cleaning it instead. You this Dawn dish detergent, I also want to check to see if I needed to purchase more Raid Bug Spray and the finished brand of the Jet Dry Rinse Aid because those items always run out before I replace them. But today, they both seem to be half full, so we're good for now. I forgot to grab the step stool from the kitchen, so I was standing on this metal stool my son used this while playing his video games. It's less than 24 inches in height, so I wasn't in any danger, just in case you were wondering. I did dust the other window as well before cleaning it, but failed to record it. I also managed to clean these windows as well as the one in the bathroom without popping out any of the screens, although I did come close, and I didn't break any of the sashes, so today's window cleaning was a huge success. is to clean the windows in my youngest son's room and hallway bath, which means all the windows upstairs will be done next week. I may also clean the windows in the kitchen as well, but it just depends on how much time I have as next week's schedule is pretty full. I want to use the Swifter Sweeping Mop to clean the floors today because they shouldn't be very dirty considering the iRobot has been running for a few hours now. I still like the sweeper vacuum behind the iRobot because it misses a few spots sometimes. I don't need to mop the floors in here today because I mopped them last month, but I do plan to mop the floors in the bathroom. Although the iRobot swept under the bed, I still use the Swifter Sweeping Mop to do the same. But I do rely on the iRobot to vacuum under the bed more thoroughly because as you just saw, I sweep under the edge of the bed only. Whenever I sweep, 
sleep, I make sure to get behind the doors and have in the past moved his bedroom furniture to do the same. But we're not going to do that today. And as you can see, thanks to the iRobot, the floors were not that bad. Before cleaning his bathroom, I want to check on laundry and set the ironing board up so I can fold laundry on it later. If you're new to my channel, I fold laundry on the ironing board in the family room because the laundry room gets too warm and the countertops are too high. I'm using the same soapy water and microfiber cloth I used on his bedroom windows to clean this one bathroom window. Again, saving time and money. Also, the cleaning products I'm using today to clean this bathroom is my vinegar mixture, spray away glass cleaner, and Clorox disinfectant wipes. And I'm also using the following cleaning tools. The Rubbermaid scrubber, Swifter duster, Swifter sweeping mop, Scotch Bright sponge, and the microfiber cloth. were dirty but not as dirty as the ones in the gym last week. From here we'll continue to clean this bathroom while also checking on Max and our laundry. But first let's deep clean this vanity. Hubby and the boys arrived home a few minutes ago which means I can spend more time cleaning this vanity. They do plan to leave in a few hours to get haircuts, and when they do, I'll go downstairs to check on Max and clean my Keurig coffee pot. This is the side of the vanity he uses to deep clean his teeth using the water pick, so it doesn't get as dirty as the other side of the vanity that he uses most often. So instead of using a scotch Bright sponge and my vinegar mixture to clean this sink, I've decided to use a Clorox wipe instead. We have one side cleaned and now we're moving on to the other side. On this side of the vanity, unlike the other side, I am using the Rubbermaid scrubber and a scotch Bright sponge along with my vinegar mixture to clean this sink. And again, we're using a Swifter duster on the vanity lights, spray away glass cleaner on the mirrors, and along with my vinegar mixture, non-bleach Clorox wipes on the vanity countertops. If you haven't purchased this Rubbermaid scrubber, you can also use an old toothbrush instead. Also, the Scrub Daddy or Scrub Mummy sponge will work just as well, removing the crud around your faucets. Just be careful not to scrub too hard as to not remove the varnish off the faucet itself. And as you can see, that's exactly what I did in this sink. Along with using a microfiber cloth to dry the top of the vanity, I'm also going to use a Clorox wipe to disinfect it. And I'm going to use the same microfiber cloth to clean the vanity cabinets and drawers. Again, getting multiple uses out of cleaning tools, thus saving you time and money. I was trying to show you the crud that was inside the mini toothbrush slash toothpaste holder. By the way, those are from Amazon. I should have also shown you the bottom of it because they can get pretty nasty if not cleaned regularly. Before 
before cleaning the rest of the bathroom, I wanted to come downstairs and check on Max. And I also wanted to perform monthly maintenance on my carriage. My goal was to clean all parts of the carriage, in which I did, but I also wanted to change the filter, but realized too late I didn't have a replacement. So I decided to ask Covey to pick up some filters on the way home. Also, if you choose to use vinegar to clean your coffee pot, be careful because if you don't rinse the machine thoroughly, the vinegar can corrode the internal components of the machine, affecting its performance. While waiting on Hubby to return with the filters, I decided to clean all parts of the carriage and leave them out to air dry. By the way, this carriage is not difficult to clean at all, and it's also easy to change the filter and to descale it. The only issue I have is I forget how to reassemble the cut pot holder, but guess what, I do eventually figure it out. Along with cleaning the internal parts, I also like using soapy water in a sponge to clean the external components as well. By the way, this is a new scotch Bright sponge that I'm using because the scrub daddy was looking kind of raggedy so I had to toss it. I do plan to purchase new scrub daddies later this week. The boys added a lot of Dawn dish detergent in this sink, so instead of using Dawn Power Wash to clean the sink, we'll use the Dawn dish detergent that's already in here. The key difference between Dawn dish detergent and Dawn Power Wash is the addition of alcohol. is refilling these soap dispensers. We keep the aloe vera hand soap in our linen closet and once retrieved, we'll refill the dish soap as well as the hand soap dispenser. There is a half bath on this floor that we could use to wash our hands, but it's more convenient to have an additional hand soap dispenser in the kitchen, which also ensures hands are washed before touching anything in this kitchen. It never fails. Whenever I refill the dish soap dispenser, I make a huge mess. Anyway, let's rinse this off so we can quickly return upstairs and finish cleaning this bathroom. Max is down for his nap, so that gives me plenty of time to clean the shower and the tub. His bath mat and towels are clean because he changed them out this morning. So I'm not going to replace them, but I do want to tidy them up a bit. I also want to show you how dirty his tub is. He doesn't use the tub, so I'm thinking this debris is from the dirt particles floating in the air. And they also may be coming from the old bath mat as he hangs it after each use. After dusting, I always use a Clorox wipe to disinfect it. It does require about five to six Clorox wipes to clean it, but I don't mind. Here's a before of what the shower currently looks like. It's not as bad as it was last month, so he must have rinsed it earlier this week because I did tell him I would be filming cleaning his bathroom today. I would usually soak this hand wand in vinegar to remove the crud, but for the sake of time, I decided to clean it with a Rubbermaid scrub brush instead. I'm also using the power drill to remove all the dirt and grime off the tall walls, floor panel, and in between the grout. This takes time, but it's worth it. It takes me less than five minutes to clean this shower with this power drill versus the 15 or more minutes it took before. By the way, for those that are new to my channel, the power drill is from Walmart and the brush heads are from Amazon. After 
opening in the corners of the shower and the floor panel will refill our vinegar mixture to spray down the shower doors. I don't use the drill on the shower doors because I'm afraid it'll scratch the glass. But I do use the yellow side of a Scotch-Brite sponge to remove the hard water stains. Then I follow it up with a damp microfiber cloth. I stopped measuring the ingredients of the vinegar mixture a while ago, so I now film it whenever I need to refill it. I started using this vinegar mixture in the bathrooms over a year ago because I watched a documentary on cleaning products and was shocked to find what was in some of the products I was using. I still use the same Wyman products to clean leather, stainless steel, and granite countertops and use Pledge to clean all my wood surfaces. But I only use the vinegar mixture in the sinks showers and toilets because it works. I hadn't planned to clean the inside of the vanity cabinets today, but when I returned the cleaning products, I noticed how dirty it was and couldn't help myself. I clean inside the vanities in all three full bathrooms once every three months, so I'm a month ahead of myself. And when I was done, I figured since I cleaned one side, I might as well clean the cabinet on the other side. This side of the vanity wasn't as dirty and it contained fewer products, so the process went pretty quickly. I was going to vacuum inside the drawers since I cleaned inside the cabinets, but I talked myself out of it because again, Max is asleep downstairs and I want to get this shower cleaned before waking him up. Again, I sprayed down the shower doors first with the vinegar mixture and allowed it to sit for at least 15 minutes. Afterwards, I used the yellow side of a Scotch-Brite sponge to scrub away any hard water stains, then followed it up with a damp microfiber cloth. I also wiped the glass of each shower panel three times in opposite directions to ensure I removed all the stains and cleaning products, and I rinsed the microfiber cloth in between cleaning each panel. Yes, this is a lot of work, but I always congratulate myself on a job well done when finished. Also, I only do this once per month, and in between that time, the family and I rinse our doors after each shower. Yes, I am aware we should use a squeegee, but we are not squeegee people. Maybe one day, but not today. most of my time cleaning the bottom of the shower doors because that's where most of the soap scum was located. Apparently my son is rinsing the top of the shower doors but not the bottom so I'll definitely remind him to rinse the entire shower door after each shower. <laughs> Again, these towels are clean, but I do want to rehang them because they were looking pretty sad. I also want to rinse the shower floor panel before giving you an after shot of this clean shower. I hadn't cleaned the floors outside the shower yet, so any debris you see is located outside the shower. cleaning the floor panel located outside the shower door and the floor, I noticed how dirty the moldings were located below the towels, so I cleaned that area as well. I also rinsed the microfiber cloth before cleaning the shower products and returning them to the shower. I make it a point to always wipe down the shower products before returning them to the clean shower. You wouldn't believe the amount of soap scum, dirt, and grime that accumulate on your shower products over time. So it's always a good idea to wipe them down before placing them back in your clean shower. 
also wipe down the shower wand when I clean the shower head. That's another area that most people forget to clean. Before checking on Max, I decided to do a quick clean of the toilet. That's why I'm putting on these gloves. Max was pretty quiet downstairs, so I figured I'll take advantage of this time to get as much done as possible. Boy, will I regret this decision later. I'm spending a little more time than usual cleaning his toilet because it was filthy. I thought it would be a quick clean, but it wasn't. It seems he cleaned inside of the toilet bowl, but not anywhere else. That's another reason I deep clean his bathroom once per month. the microfiber cloth and clean the cabinet and drawer doors of the vanity again trying to get as much done as possible before going downstairs i'm only using water to clean these cabinet fronts because they're painted and not stained if they were stained i would have used the pledge wood oil instead last month i forgot to clean the internal panel of the cabinet fronts but i remember today opening this cabinet, I noticed he was low on paper towels and toilet paper. Once I'm done cleaning it, I'll also restock it. His bathroom doesn't have a linen closet, so we keep his supplies, as well as his brother's, in the hallway bath linen closet. Before we remodeled this bathroom, there wasn't any storage space available. So I have this vanity cabinet installed. There was plenty of space for it after we removed the build a grade mirror that was here before. I had planned to purchase new mirrors anyway, so this was a perfect choice all around. It does block some of the light from the window, but I chose storage space over natural light in this instance, and I don't regret it. And this side of the vanity is not as dirty as the other side, but I still like to give it a thorough cleaning just in case. After this, we'll return the drill to my bathroom linen closet and also check on Max. Boy, do I regret not checking on him earlier. He had an accident in our bedroom, the laundry room, and the half bath. I should have closed those doors before going upstairs, but I didn't. I should have also known that when he's quiet, he's either asleep or doing something he shouldn't have been doing. After cleaning up his mess, I took him outside for a quick walk before returning inside to continue cleaning. my hands we're gonna prep the oven for deep cleaning tomorrow again it's not working at the moment but I figured this would also be a great time to clean it my plan is to remove the oven racks spray them down with the Dawn power wash along with the oven itself and allow the product to sit overnight before scrubbing them clean if you're new to my channel we use the bottom oven 99% of the time versus the top because using the top oven too often can burn off the motorboard on the control panel We've scheduled someone to come out next week to fix the miswire on the control panel that occurred when we lost power last week. Mm -hmm. 
Hubby and the boys have returned, so I can now reassemble my carriage and replace the filter. And as you can see, I forgot how to reassemble the coffee pot assembly, but with some trial and error, I soon figured it out. It's amazing how great a fresh cup of coffee tastes after cleaning your coffee pot and changing the filter. Although not shown here, I did soak the filter for five minutes and rinsed it for an additional 60 seconds before replacing it in the water reservoir. I do have curage rinse pods, but only use those when I switch from making coffee to making cocoa or when I want a cup of hot water for tea. Also, our second load of laundry is dry, so let's fold them and quickly put them away. As you saw earlier, Max is down for his third nap of the day. He's also due for grooming and which I've scheduled for him this week. Now that it's getting warmer, I like to have his coat trimmed down a little lower than usual as well as the hair on his ears to prevent him from overheating when he's playing outside. I've also switched the ironing board around because whenever the camera is facing the sun, it causes a dark shadow, causing your footage to look darker than it really is. I have a few more things to get done today before we lose the sun. So let's head back upstairs to sweep and mop the bathroom floors. Instead of using a vacuum, I'm gonna use the broom instead in order not to wake up Max. I prefer using a vacuum when cleaning my floors in the bathroom because the vacuum does a better job of picking up more dust and they have a more positive impact on indoor air quality. Don't get me wrong, sweeping cleans up more quickly than vacuuming, but brooms also push dirt back and forth and kick up dust, putting it back into the air. plan to sweep the floors in this hallway bath, but after seeing the dirt and debris, I couldn't help myself. My goal was to return this broom to the linen closet and grab the Swifter wet pad and mop to clean the floors in my oldest son's bathroom. I also hadn't planned to remove the trash, but I figured I'm already in here, why not? And I also decided to leave the trash on the stairs so my son can take it out later. I also asked my son to check all the Glade plugins and replace them as needed, as well as checking to ensure all the bathrooms had full boxes of grocery bags that we use as trash bags. As I noticed the boxes of trash bags in my oldest son's bathroom was low. It's not going to take long to mop these floors because they're not in terrible shape. But I always try to mop the floors after cleaning the bathrooms because I can guarantee you that the boys only do it when asked. I'm using the Febreze lavender scented wet pads, which in my opinion have a strong scent. I prefer the original scented ones over these, but I mistakenly purchased these in bulk over two months ago, so I figured I'll use them all up first before purchasing the other ones. Also, it does leave my boys' bathroom smelling fresher longer than the original scented ones. Look at 
looks are deceiving because these floors were dirtier than I thought. It's a good thing I decided to mop them after all. If you made it this far in the video, I want to thank you for watching Sissy Spaces. And if you enjoyed today's video and you're new to my channel, please hit that like, subscribe button, and share this channel with your family and friends. Again, thanks for watching, and I'll see you in my next video.